So recently we operated on a patient like this. He was a 32 year old gentleman who had come to us, had been having headaches off and on for the last six months, but they were increasing in intensity. And he had a cup, an episode of seizures or epilepsy. That alarmed him. He got an MRI done and the MRI showed a medium sized tumor in the brain on the left side near the motor strip and the speech area. So this was a person who had no deficit. He was fully conscious. He was doing everything normally, but there was a tumor and that tumor needed surgery. The brain is the most important organ which controls the whole body. There are parts of the brain which control movement of the arm or the leg or speech or vision. And if the tumor is near one of these areas, when we take the tumor out, there is a potential that there is damage to these areas and the patient may be left with a deficit. So even though we may take the tumor out completely, in certain location tumors, there is a major risk of problems in the patient and the patient may be disabled for life. In such circumstances, we use a technique called awake craniotomy, which means that we do the surgery with the patient awake and conscious and not under anesthesia. So the patient is awake. We give local anesthetic on the skin nerves. The patient is given a sedation, a short acting sedative and a pain injectable painkiller. And then we open the skull. The skin incision is given, the bone is taken out and then we are ready to operate the patient. When we take the tumor out, the anesthetist or the doctor will continuously monitor what is happening to the patient. So they will keep talking to the patient, keep checking that the speech is intact. They will keep checking the power of the hand and legs and the movement to make sure that when we are doing the surgery, there is no damage done to the important structure. So we talked to the patient, we counseled the patient, we gave him this option of awake craniotomy. As expected, his first reaction was no, I cannot get the surgery done while I'm under, not under anesthesia. So this patient who had come to us, he, at first he rejected the idea and said, no, 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 I can't have my surgery done without anesthesia. But as he thought over it, as we counseled him, as he realized the risk involved in the surgery, he came around to the idea that he would get it done and without anesthesia under a vague condition. You see, well-motivated and mature patients are the candidates who can undergo awake craniotomies because it needs a lot of cooperation from the patient end to undergo this procedure. So uh, the basic role starts right from the surgeon where he explains the rationale for awake craniotomy in a particular patient. Then follows the anesthesiologist's role in preoperative counselling. Now counselling is the most important part in this procedure. We have to explain the patient regarding the steps of the procedure, the steps where he is going to experience pain and discomfort. So we are doing such kind of cases for a long time and then sometimes uh, we have to leave the tumors because of the some speech deficit or some problems uh, occur maybe some bleeding occur or maybe patient develops some deficit post operatively weakness of the limbs that will recur with the time and with the exercise and uh, sometimes there may be some bleeding in the areas that we have to deal with conservative management Now, this patient, while we were taking the tumor out, suddenly had an epileptic attack. And that put a spanner in the works. Because when the patient has an epileptic attack, he's moving wildly. He's, there is a lot of activity going on. And the patient gets confused and irritable. 
So, he loses consciousness and when he gains consciousness, he is irritable, he is not in his full senses. So, we had to wait, let things settle down. Luckily, he came around in 3-4 minutes and gradually the confusion cleared and he was able to resume the surgery. So, this is a known complication during the surgery, happens once in a while and uh, when we were lucky, this settled down fast and we were able to continue with the surgery. At the end of the surgery, whatever deficit he gets subsequently in the next couple of days would settle down once the swelling or the edema settles. So the patient did very well. He was discharged home on the third day after the surgery and he's doing well so far. And despite having a brain tumor, he, was, he opted for the awake craniotomy with which we were able to ensure a quality of life for the patient.